Welcome to ZZ Talk with your host, Zeno. And Zeus. Uh, Today is a very different show. Um, This is going to be one of the many collaboration videos we hope to do um, during the run of our show. And today we're joined by two special guests. Uh, It's the guys from uh, the radio show, M16 and Easy. Guys, welcome to the ZZ Talk YouTube show, not yet a podcast. Um, How are you guys doing? Glad to be here, man. You know, it's always good hanging out with y'all. Right. So glad to be doing that again. Glad to be here. Get to talk some smack with you guys and just talk about all kind of different things. It's been a long time coming. I mean, when Zeus, what was it, like three months ago? That we did three the- months ago. It was before the new year. Definitely yeah. before the new year. Well, it was the first one on our channel. The The last one was on you guys' channel. So this is like reciprocal. The last one was an actual podcast. So your boys, Zeus and Zeno, are actually in iTunes. Oh, so oh, we made it big. Out, yeah, check out the, the radio show, The Aftermath. That episode, we have uh, listeners in India. That's dope. International. Yeah. All right. Yes. Uh, so I guess to start off, um, I guess I'll throw it to you, M16. Um, tell the people about who you are. Um, just a little bit, you know, just like I'm a Saints fan, which I don't know why I am that. But <laughs> <laughs> now, well, um, Outside just of, in case there was any doubt with that background. Right. Yeah, you you should see the rest of my room. This is just this is just one side. This you should see the rest wall. of. That's just one wall. Mm. But um, well, as far as um myself um as you can clearly see, I'm a I'm a Saints fan, uh, native Louisiana guy. So same with my brother, we're all about Louisiana sports. So we're uh, avid Pelicans and Saints fans. He watches college sports. I don't really dabble in college sports. I feel like they should be paying those men and women, but that's a story for another day. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm a pretty basic dude as far as, you know, I'm, I'm sort of like you guys, you know, I'm into comic books, um, the comic book movies, I like sports. And just like you guys, I'm a fellow podcaster as well. And I used to rap a little bit, but I'm moving oh. on from that. And okay. yeah, so I'm, you know, sort of moving into this whole, you know, podcasting, radio host thing, but hip hop is always here for me, though. Maybe but, by maybe by the end of the episode, we get a sixteen from you. Uh, M sixteen. Oh my god, just got it. He figured it out. <laughs> Mind blown. I thought it was a gun. Uh, well, yeah, it, I thought rapid fire was takes two. You know, that's what we call that's what we call a double entendre. Uh, <laughs> easy. Tell us about yourself. Um. So yeah, like my brother, uh, podcaster. Um, big sports fan. Um, pr- I'd like to think I'm pretty in tune with what's going on in the world, uh, politics, sports, uh, business, stocks, all anything you could think of. I probably have talked about it with somebody at some point. Um, definitely not scared to have a conversation with anybody. So um, definitely glad to be on the show and uh, looking forward to the conversation. See. All right. This, uh, we did have a couple of questions for, for the guys. All right. So uh, since you guys have watched the show a few times, you obviously know that our standard thing is do a little introduction. And then, you know, we go into our top five and then we talk about our topics today because you guys are the special guests. We're going to have a special episode. We're going to have a special section. It's going to be a quick Q&A. Just you guys told us a little bit about yourselves. We want to know a little bit more about yourself specifically when it comes to the podcast world. So our first question and whoever, whichever one, you know what? I'll, I'll let y'all know. I, I know I'm 16, so I'm gonna let Easy answer the first one first. Uh, so real quickly, how did you guys come up with your show? Okay, so this is like a two part question. <laughs> the first part, my brother and you know his friends had one like version of the show and they did y'all did a lot of episodes i don't want to throw out the wrong number but they had a pretty long run with that show um stopped the show and then they made then we basically made this one the radio show um and i was in college at the time and my brother basically was like hey we're basically starting over with this radio show i want you to hop on and i'm like nah i'm not really trying to do that and he's like look come on just do it long story short since 2015, we've had the radio show, which we had a run for about a year. I guess we had about 20 episodes. We had a good bit of episodes. Kind of went on a little hiatus. 
once the pandemic hit, we basically all came back together. And now we have this incarnation of the radio show. Um, and we just had our 100th episode, uh, wow. which will air coming up at the end of this week. Well, actually, hey, so uh, M16, I guess you can answer this. Um, what was the difference between the previous incarnation and then this incarnation? And like, basically, and are those episodes available for us to be able to listen to if we want to we want to catch some of the older episodes to see a young, fresh M16 on the podcast? Okay, so the previous incarnation of the show was called um, Go Radio. So this was like 2010, 2011. And I would say the biggest difference between what we did then and now is that we didn't know what we're doing. I, I'm not going to say like we know especially what we're doing now for sure, but definitely in 2010 and 2011, um, it was a lot less polished. Um, we didn't really, let's just say this, that we were not serious whatsoever. We did a lot of goofy things that wouldn't float, like some of the humor that was okay, you know, 10, 11 years ago. Yeah, we'd have got kicked off. We do any of that stuff we was doing back then, we'd, got, we'd get kicked off the air immediately. So basically, don't go look for those episodes. <laughs> and I was going to answer this question with that, you know, that the only person who has the rest of those episodes is me. I had them taken down. It's housed on a, on a PC somewhere. And those were good times. I'm not going to diss what we did, but there's no way some of the humor that we were doing back then could float today. So, yes, so no a way. Lot of, a lot of learnings from GOAT Radio, which translated into the, the product you see now. Yes. All right. Okay. All right. Um, well, I guess that naturally leads to the next question, which is how would you describe uh, the radio show to someone who's never listened to it or, or watched the YouTube um, clips? How would you describe it? Um, I guess the best way to explain it, the tagline is we're a, we're a hip hop variety show because the focus of the show in the first place was on hip hop because the original hosts that are still around, it was centered around music. We were talking hip hop. We still play hip hop music. Uh, not as much so more now that we're on YouTube, because even though we're friends with a lot of the artists, our good buddy, you know, smiling about it right now, our good buddy, the copyright strike is sitting out there waiting to get you. But when we're doing podcasting, as long as I have uh, permission from the artist, I can play whatever I want to. But the focus of the show was, is, is hip hop. But now with so many things going on, we dabble into other things. We review movies. Um, we review albums. So it's essentially a hip hop variety show is the best way I can describe it. Okay. Uh, you know, when you said the copyright strike thing, it reminded me of our very first episode. So I was, I, I took down the clip after we, we recorded Zeus and I, and I started putting it together. And we had in our intro, right now, anyone that knows our show knows that it's this very um, uh, flowery song at the, at the beginning. But yeah. before it was actually, because the name of our production company is um, Brown Paper Bag Productions. It was actually Brown Paper Bag by DJ Khaled. <laughs> like, like 10 seconds. Oh, man. That was the intro. <laughs> and uh, immediately, YouTube was like, nope. <laughs> so, they were like, yeah. stop. so I had to go with the, yeah, with the alternate um, intro song. Uh, Zeus, next question is yours. Yeah, yeah. So you guys, you, so I've seen, the, I've seen quite a few episodes, and I've noticed that you guys have, at the most, is six hosts. And I've also noticed that you guys are able to do, you know, some shows with less hosts. So my question is, does it make it easier having so many hosts? Because obviously with between, on ZZ Talk, there has to be the two Zs. So if one of us isn't available, we can't, you know, we can't do the show. So is, is it harder or easier having the, as many hosts as you guys have? I'll let AZ take that one. Okay. Um, I think it's easier with more people just because of, how we do the show. Um, I'm big on, you know, if there's a topic or a situation, I love to hear a lot of opinions about it because, you know, I think a certain way, but there could be some other people that think a different way and bring a new perspective to the table. Um, especially when we play One Gotta Go, the more people that are on the show, the better because you get to hear more controversy uh, when we play that game. But just even with different topics, you know, I might feel a certain way about something or 16 might feel a certain way about something. And then, you know, Diva, Cujo, Jerk, Tiki Blue, 
uh, they might have a different opinion or they might bring something else to the table that's like, okay, I didn't think about that. So I think the way we do our show, the more the merrier, just because, you know, we have more content and more things to give the listener or the viewer. But, you know, uh, sometimes when we don't have the host or all of them, we can still kind of flow because we kind of all have that um, chemistry now that, you know, hey, if some two of the hosts can't make it, you know, we can still flow with the show and just talk different things or pivot to something else. Two follow ups in that. Um, what's one got to go? And two, how do all of you uh, know each other, the co hosts? Okay, so one got to go is a, a segment we do every week. Um, we have topics that range from uh, what singer got to go, what cha- food chain restaurant, um, what like. I've seen, I've seen a clip of. of one of these before. They're hilarious. Yeah, so like. Uh, the last one was like, what type of wing got to go? Like grilled, fried, crispy, wet. And, you know, we say, hey, this one, I can't, I like it, but out of all of these, this one got to go. So that's basically how the game goes. It kind of started from, uh, you know, the memes that you see on Facebook. And I was like, hey, 16, we we should play this on the game because we all just kind of have different tastes and things like that. So something I might passionately feel is number one, you know, one of the co-hosts might disagree. So it's always an interesting debate towards the end of the, yeah. The variety and variety show. Um, There you go. So how do you guys know each other? Well, obviously I know how you two know each other. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, we're we're related. Um, But to be honest, 16, this is all 16's uh, friends that, you know, he worked with or connected with in some way or fashion. And because I'm his brother, I happen to get to know them just as well. So I would probably say that we're all uh, pretty good friends. Okay. Sounds like M16 is the nucleus. Uh, he, he is. I would definitely give him his credit on that. He is the, the nucleus. Without his network, I don't know if we would have oh, a guest for the show. Come on, man. Oh, oh, okay. I have one more question, but I'll leave that to the end because it makes sense to end with that one. Um, Zeus, you had a question about the voices? Yeah, actually, so that, that actually leads perfectly to the next question, which is, you get, you know, you guys said that you guys are a hip-hop variety show. And I, I've seen some episodes where it gets a little bit, I wouldn't say too serious, but it does get serious. Uh, the Ice Cube, you know, uh, backing Trump kind of comes into mind. Yeah. Being six individual black voices, obviously with between me and Zeus, me and Zeno, you know, I'm Hispanic, he's black. More specifically, I'm Im- I call myself immigrant adjacent. He's he is immigrant, so you know we have these different views coming from different backgrounds. All of you guys being black, but as we know, our cultures are never monolithic. We all have yep. different vo- viewpoints. So, is it also important for you guys to be able to share these individual black voices? Is that also something important that you definitely would that y'all guys want to come through the the earphones, basically saying, hey, these are different views from people with similar backgrounds, but also different experiences. Absolutely. Um, I take a lot of pride in the fact that we're a proudly black show and I'm not ashamed of that. Um, it's important to me, actually. And to be able to express those views with people who I respect, because that's the cool part about the show is that we don't always have to agree or get along in a certain subject, but everybody gets their voice. Um, it's been times, you know, when we're talking about subjects like you like you were talking about Zeus, where it got really serious and it was political. We've had listeners who accuse us of being, well, you guys are too liberal or too far left. And I was like, OK, so first off, you'll never know our politics because we're not it's not Republican. It's not Democrat. We're anti stupid. So we're all about. So it's, it's but it's true. It's like. If the Republicans are doing something, we'll call them out. But when the Democrats were wearing the Kente Claus and they were kneeling, we ripped them too because it was disgusting. So oh, we remember that. <laughs> yeah. So it was. So it's very important to be able to have the, that black voice or minority voice, you know, because people look at it like Zeus. You're a minority too. We're fighting the same battles, man. We're we're on the same side. So it's like it's good to cultivate that with people that you can respect and put that out there and see how people feel about it. Okay. Yeah. Good answer. Um, before I get into my last question, if YouTube has the functionality, I'm going to have your channel 
the button to go straight to your channel at the bottom of this video. Nice. It's going to be in the description. So, guys, please go check out the channel. Love good content there. Uh, the last question is, where do you guys want your channel to go uh, in the future? Like, it, from where it is now, what improvements do you see that you can make? And, you know, what Tell are, them real quickly what, what your main thing that you said for our show. Oh, um, I for, for ours, I was like, I want to, because Zeus uh, phrases as, where do you see this podcast going? Mm -hmm. Well, I want to make it a podcast <laughs> because right <laughs> now it's just a YouTube show. We are not like on any of the uh, podcast platforms. Um, but yeah, well, I can help you with I can help you with that though when yes. when, when you're ready for that. That would be great. Um, but um, all right, so where do you guys want your channel or, or your show to go in the future? Sixteen. That's all you, but man, that's a good question. That's, they come up with some good stuff here, man. Now I know how it feels to be on the other side of when I'm peppering guests with questions here. Um, well, I want to, well, I want to say that we're still, even though we're like with this incarnation, basically five years into it, it's always room for improvement. Um, there's so many podcasts now, you know, you're seeing different things that people are doing. What I, what I would love to do is make this our jobs. That is, that's really the main goal to make this our jobs where we can provide this content and make it a way to keep the lights on. So that's the biggest thing. So I want to say that big goal is to collaborate a lot more with other podcasters, um, continue building the network and see where it takes us. But the goal is to make this channel, make this show a entity that is profitable and hopefully have a network of friends that we can bring in and we can all just do it together, you know? All right. Well, hopefully about... this helps multi multiply your, your viewer base. Uh, any, any additions? Easy? No, I think 16 basically covered it. Um, I think this is a hobby on steroids because we really do enjoy doing it. And, but we also see a future in it. Um, and I, you know, I thoroughly enjoy it. I try to make it, you know, every Tuesday and, you know, just see what we have to talk about. You know, there's always stuff, to, content to talk about. It's just a matter of, yes, you know, can we get it all yeah. in yeah. one show? All right, cool. Well, that's, uh, that's it for our Q and A. Top five, Zeus. All right. So, as you guys know by now, we'd love to have a top five. We can't have a show without a top five. So I'm here for the top five. Love the top five. <laughs> Appreciate it. I came up with this a while ago, but it actually works perfectly because considering that uh, coming up on Sunday, we got the Super Bowl. Uh, so, I was driving down the road, was listening to another radio show. I'm sure you guys know which one I'm talking about. They have a little at the end of their seg at the end of their show. They have a little segment where people call in to say like, you know name your favorite candy, your favorite uh, soda, like fast food restaurant. So I kind of got the idea. And then also remembering when we were on the aftermath, how y'all told us that y'all had conversations about what's the best chicken in the meat department at a particular grocery <laughs> store. So, yeah. so since you guys have had this, I think this is definitely up your alley. So what we're going to do is we're going to create the best Super Bowl meal. So we're going to have five items. It's top five. One, we're going to have wings. Because you can't have this without wings. The most important part that you need to have with the wings is the flavor. But you can also tell us where specifically you need to have them from. If you make them yourself, is there anything particular that you have to have? So that next thing is going to be burgers. Same thing, wherever you get it from. Or if you make it yourself, what, what's your special recipe? A side, a dessert, and then the last thing is a drink. So that's going to be our top five. You guys are our guests. Um, currently on the screen right now is m16 so i'm gonna i'm gonna shoot off to you we're gonna do uh, one by one so real quickly what's your uh, wing and remember specifically i need to know the flavor so you want to know where it's, where it's coming from or just the flavor that is where, if, where if it's coming from and you, the flavor yeah the flavor is the most important part with the wings but if where it's coming from is that if that's important to you you also need uh let us know where where you got to get them from okay so that so if i'm basing it on last year it would be me because easy and i watch super bowl together and i barbecue so yeah. it would have it would have been me. And if I'm making them, then we would just do, you know, barbecue sauce, sweet baby raised barbecue sauce by the way. That's the one you gotta use for it. So that'd be mine. All right, easy. All right. So if I'm not at 16's crib and I can't have his wings, I'm going to Taco Mac and I'm getting the lemon pepper wet. <laughs> okay. All right. Go ahead, uh, my turn. And right. I might have no, just ahead. had that 
<laughs> um, so I, I, I like being in the kitchen, but wings aren't my strong suit. So I'll probably go to uh, Buffalo Wild Wings Asian Zinc. All right. Good choice. So I got a, a specific restaurant uh, called US Twenty Three that I used to that I used to go to all the time. It's not that far from. It's on Beaufort Highway, hence US Twenty Three. Mm-hmm. So I usually go there, but they kind of a uh, went from these size wings to this size wings. So Ooh. actually now there's this teriyaki spot, and I wish I remembered the name. It's on Jimmy Carter. There's a teriyaki spot. I just discovered that they make some bomb ass wings. But like you, uh, sixteen, I actually started making my own wings. So I don't barbecue them. I don't do them on the grill, right? Okay. I actually, what I do is I throw them in the air fryer. So I throw the wings in the air fryer, right? Then after 15 minutes or 20 minutes, I toss them. And then I throw them back in the air fryer a little bit to, to kind of, uh, well, depends on the flavor. So I got two flavors specifically. Spicy barbecue, that one, I toss it, throw them back in the fryer for a little bit, and then I toss it again after I'm done. The other one is hot lemon pepper. It's got to be hot. It's got to be lemon pepper. Nice. And that's got to be wet. So 60, uh, so easy, <laughs> me and you are on the same on the same side with that. Has to be lemon pepper, it. hot and wet. All right. Nice. All right. All right. Perfect. That's number one. Number two, we're going to have a burger. Because we're going to be fat asses during this meal, by the way, because we're going to have a lot of stuff. But That's right up our alley, then. The burger. So uh, so I'll, I'll let you put, kick this one off uh, easy. Burger. What kind of burger? And where specifically would you be probably be getting it from? All right, this might come as a surprise, but if I'm getting the burger, it's probably coming from Shake Shack, and I'm getting the double cheeseburger. Mm. I'm gonna have to go after you. Like I know I'm the one that's kind of trusting, but I gotta go to Shake Shack too. Man, to Shake Shack is so good. <laughs> Don't get me started on how great Shake Shack is. Shake so I got Shack. a real quick funny story about Shake Shack. I did okay. not discover Shake Shack until I went down to Tampa, and my okay. friend went and got Shake Shack, and I was eating that scorpion burger. That scorpion okay. burger is bomb, and she was like, "Yeah, you can only get it here in Tampa. There's no, there's no, uh, there's no Shake Shacks in Georgia." I googled that, man. They got three here in Georgia. They got, yep. and they're close to me. They got one on, on uh, what's it called, near Perimeter, uh-huh. near Perimeter Mall, and then downtown, and then Midtown. I'm like, you tell me I got. So I have to go get my Shake Shack burger, and it has to be a scorpion burger. All right, uh, uh, sixteen, what you got? Um, for me, again, it's another thing where I could barbecue and make mine, but to go get one where I really want a burger, um, I probably would say Burger Fire is where I would go to uh, get a burger. Uh, it's got to be a double for sure. Um, but yeah, the double uh, Burger Fire burger would be where I go with that. All right, Dino. Um, I'd never heard of Shake Shack before until when my, my sister-in-law works at World Bank in D.C. And across from the World Bank, there's a Shake Shack. And there was like a line going out of there because Barack Obama had gone to Shake Shack and people wanted to go see him. So she called and she was like, oh my God, Barack Obama's here. I'm, I'm uh, not going for Obama, I'm going for the burger. Right, so, but anyway, that's, that's <laughs> my um, only knowledge of Shake Shack. Um, I would probably buy mine. Uh, I don't have a preference. So Kroger, because it's nearest to me. Um, and uh, stuff it with blue cheese. I love blue cheese. Oh, oh nice. In my burger. That sounds... That is Delicious. fantastic. Yeah. We're, we're going to Zeno's house uh, for burgers next time. Man. Yeah, that Welcome. sounds great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How do you cook that? Um, in the in the oven. So basically, okay. No, I do sear it first and then put it inside the the oven. Let it cook all around because I don't like mine like rare, medium, medium to medium well is how I usually like mine. Yeah, medium well is how I do mine. All right. So the next thing is a side it can be anything you want so it could be fries it could be whatever other thing that you just like yo i gotta have this with my burger or or just an excuse to have something else in the super bowl eat, eating while you're, you're watching the super bowl so it can also be any side that specifically that you always have at the super bowl so it can be a side i'll do mine real fast honestly mine is boring i'm gonna do checkers fries i gotta get some checkers fries i haven't been to checkers in three years but i've had their fries like, because I go to Kroger and I go buy the, the bag of their fries and it tastes just pretty much the same. It's got to be burger, uh, checkers fries. Uh, I'm going to let, uh, Zeno, I'm going to let you have that one. Okay, yeah, so I know I said I didn't care where I get the burger from, but I might as well get the burger from Publix because I'm going to be getting the macaroni salad from Publix, the deli section. Okay, 16. Um, for me, it's, it's, it's fries too. Um, as far as where they come from, I mean... It's fries, man. You know, it's equal opportunity wherever it's coming from. But they have these, um, 
what are these? Uh, they're, they're the Idaho fries that have the, the skin on them. They come in a brown bag. Um, yeah, they're good in the oven or on the, you know, or frying them. They go well either way. So I'll probably throw some cheese on top of those and mm. I'm good to go. All right. Easy. Um, I definitely love the checkers fries idea. Um, between them and Popeyes, they probably had the best fries. I never had Popeyes um, um, fries. I ain't gonna lie. Oh wait, I need to change mine. I just it just dawned me. It's Zaxby's fries is where I'm gonna go Ooh, if I'm yeah. buying somewhere. Oh, Those yeah. are the ones. Uh, Underrated. Hold on, hold on, Zeno. Hold on, uh, <laughs> Zeus. I'm sorry, Zeus. You need to go to Popeyes. Get you some fries. They're great. Um, take it from me. I'll go, I go I'll there go get the once a week. With the because uh, I never had that chicken sandwich either. Okay, well, I mean, if you you got to get the spicy one though. Don't get the regular. Yeah, you got to get, get the spicy one. Yeah, well, yeah definitely get the spicy. It one. ain't messing with Chick Fil A, but it it, it does its job. Uh, I've had Zach's but I haven't honest, had Popeyes yet, so I'll probably go do that this week. But yeah, sorry, go on. <laughs> What's up with you people in Georgia just not going to Popeyes? Y'all got locations I, everywhere. I've been because it's got New Orleans on it, man. They avoid yeah, what that, we got. That actually oh, has a lot to do with it, probably. We got, we got a, a underlying like hatred towards it or discrimination yeah. against it. it. Heck, I went there before I was even like a Falcons fan. Before I started watching football, I didn't know. <laughs> oh, well, well, there you go. Um. If I had to do a side, I'd probably make um, homemade dirty rice. Or if I'm feeling really fat, I might just make a gumbo and then put it in a side bowl and have that as my side. Nice. It's because you're putting the meal inside of a side dish. It's a side. Absolutely. If you put it in a small bowl, it's a side. I like the way you think. It's all about portions. All right. All right. So the next item we're going to go with is, is a dessert. Wherever you want to get, whatever dessert you want to get, cheesecake, cake, um, ice cream, whatever you want. So whatever you want. Uh, 16, uh, I'll go ahead and let you uh, take this one. Um, it's apple pie. It's simple, but yet effective. So apple pie, I'm going to throw some ice cream on top of it. And um, yeah, that's where I'm going with that. Okay. Okay. Zeno? Uh, red velvet cupcake from Cami Cupcakes. Oh, Cami Cakes, I think is what they're called. But yeah. Okay. And uh, 16. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, easy. Uh, so for me, I'm going to my nearest supermarket and I'm getting a Oreo ice cream cake and uh, probably eating the whole thing by myself. Okay. All right, mine is actually cut, is similar. So mine is an Oreo cheesecake from the Georgia mm. Diner. I, okay. If you've never had it, it's I'm bomb. not. <laughs> it is bomb. I've, I've had a, an Oreo cheesecake before. I don't know if it's that particular one, but I have. It's still... Hey, Georgia's not look the the food. they I don't. I'm not a huge. I'm big on their like their you know country meals because I don't think they're all that. But their country. breakfast and their desserts. Point. Uh, so the last thing, most important thing, is a drink. What you guys drinking? Uh, what, uh, easy. Take that one away. Uh, what I'm drinking. So if it is non-alcoholic, I'm probably going with a strawberry simply lemonade. Probably going to have the whole jug just right here, chilling, whole game. Um, if we're going the alcoholic route, I'm definitely doing some cranberry and vodka. Hmm. Okay. You know what? Let's do that. Alcoholic, non-alcoholic, because I like the way Easy's been thinking. It's hey, 16, what you got? Let's go. <laughs> well, for me, I'm, I'm going to end up being born with this. So non-alcoholic is Dr. Pepper. Um, you probably cut me open and I'm bleeding Dr. Pepper. It's just hmm. the default for me. Um, as far as alcoholic... I don't drink. I don't drink alcohol. So, all right, get your um, second. Your second non alcoholic. If he was drinking, it'd be some like a Budweiser. Or yeah, but if I was, if it was those days, it, um, <laughs> if if I was drinking it, like if we're talking about in my day when I was still in, you know, into that before I stopped, um, it would probably be like I, I was a big fan of. I like Crown and Coke. I was a big fan of Crown and Coke, so that would probably be my um of choice, Crown and Coke. <laughs> all right, Zeno. I'm smiling because. He kind of took half of mine. But anyway, um, if it's non-alcoholic, I'm not drinking it. Um, <laughs> if it's alcoholic, um, it's either um, Crown Apple and Sprite or Jack Daniels and Coke. Okay. I got to try Crown Apple and Sprite. Man, Jack, Jack Daniels is the reason why I can grow facial hair, man. Like, <laughs> it's, it's nothing to play with. Yeah, I, I love Jack Daniels. It's great. I don't like the Honey Jack so much. It's a little too sweet, but... Jack and Coke, for sure. All right. So my mine, now an alcoholic, uh, I forgot about Dr. Pepper, and I'm from Texas. 
I was born in Texas, so really Dr. Pepper is like in my blood. So I would have done a Dr. Pepper, but because I've been raised here for too long, I would actually go with a sweet tea if it's not alcoholic. Oh, you can't go wrong with sweet tea, though. Yeah. I would make sure to go to probably the, either the worst McDonald's or the worst Waffle House in the worst neighborhoods because those will usually – those tend to have the best sweet teas. So that's where I would have to go and get mine. But uh, – but alcoholic drink, I'm just gonna do a man. I'm just gonna toss a toss a nice uh, fireball whiskey inside a side of a ginger ale. If you've never had that, it tastes just like apple cider. Wow. So, See, I'm used to just drinking fireball straight, so I've never yeah. mixed it with I've anything. I've never mixed it with anything either. That's, that's oh, you got, really? You guys are the only two people that I know that would be willing to take. Because everybody that I, that I was like, if I'm over here drinking a fireball just for the hell of it, like putting it in a little scotch glass. Everybody's like, "What are you doing again? You, do you want to die?" I was like, "No, this is, this is." Uh, I, I, I mean, yeah. Every every time Fireball's been in my possession, it's been a shot. I've never exactly. like, was like drank Fireball. Glass. Like I've never. <laughs> no, nah, listen. If well, I mean, no, it's Scotch glass. Like <laughs> That's a shot my, glass. Flex. I like sipping on my stuff uh, here and there. But uh, if you've never had, uh, if you have to mix it, try it with the ginger ale. It's actually, it actually tastes damn good. Yeah, I'm definitely not going to an office party with like a glass of Fireball, like sipping on it. Um, fireball is like if I'm, tr- I'm trying to pregame to go out, but all right, let's yeah, get shot. I was about to say Fireball is definitely like the pre, the premier pregame drink. It's yeah. definitely well, almost at every that pregame. I did this, but um, there might have been someone's company party, <laughs> and I might have had some Fireball inside of a uh, of a uh, of one of those uh, what the hell are they called flasks. Mm. Oh, and, okay. Uh, <laughs> this two part of flasks. Come on, man. Uh, Drop a little bit in here, here into some of my drinks, and just taking shots from it. So, uh, but anyway, hey, appreciate you guys for uh, taking part of this top five. This is our first uh, four people top five. That's the best Super Bowl meal. Everybody here is getting fat uh, yes. during Super Bowl Sunday. So, uh, Amen. all right, uh, that's the top five. Zeno, what we got next? All right, so we are going into sports talk. Sports with two Z's instead of an S. Um, we have a few questions for you guys. Uh, it's, it's actually more of like a roundtable discussion. Um, and then we're going to do our uh, prop bets for the Super Bowl. Uh, Those the six questions I sent you guys earlier. So I think you guys know a bit of what's going to come from that. Um, I guess the first question I'm going to ask you, uh, even though I'm smiling, it's a very serious question. <laughs> you rank Matt Ryan. Like, uh-huh. Quarterbacks. Like, are we talking uh, numbers? Yeah, so rank Matt, let's do them right now. Right now, as far as quarterbacks go, where would you rank him? If you want to do overall what you think of him, uh, what's his uh, 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 over here getting ready, so he's about to yeah. start taking some shots. I have a feeling. And, and first I, of us, first of all, let's narrow it down. Are we talking top 15, top 10? Okay. So okay. I would have to yeah, I'm I would have to ex- go first because he's got a whole tangent about the top ten quarterback thing. Yeah. So I, I gotta feel like okay. it's about to happen. Uh, it, so I'm gonna go ahead and let him do that. And get it, that is you income. want him to go first. Okay, yeah. Let's go. Okay, so I do have a theory about the top ten quarterback thing that people throw out. Um it's a cop out. It's just something people say. Because if you look at the at the, the valley from whoever's first through fifth, mm. good God, the drop off between five and six is that's the difference between maybe having a Russell Wilson and having a Dak Prescott, and that's a big gap. So that that's how I feel about when they say top ten or top or top five. But how about Matt, rank Matt Ryan? Um, I guess saying overall that I always felt that Matt Ryan was a very good but not great quarterback. Um, like people, a lot of people say stuff about him like he's trash, and he's not trash. Like. I'm I'm definitely biased because I hate the Falcons, but he's like if you take like okay a prime example with Matt Ryan is if you took Matt Ryan and you put him on the 2017 Jaguars who had the lead in the NFC in the AFC Championship game, you put him on that team, they win everything. They're winning the Super Bowl. They're winning everything. Okay. But with with Matt Ryan, I think the thing that people detract from him is that. Everything has to be in place for him to be as good as he can be. He has to have everything going. He got to get protection. He got to have Julio. He got to have the running game. He can't just do it by himself. And that's why I just say that he's in the hall of very good, but I can never call him elite. So in my theory, he's a top 10 
quarterback in that theory. But just barely. No, I wouldn't even just say I wouldn't say barely. He's drop off is there. No, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I he's, def- he's a part of that drop off. I, I definitely see what you're talking about with regards to maybe not taking control of the game if it needs to be done. Like if the if the pieces aren't there, he's not the one to be like, okay, let's you know, yeah. the, let's you know, LeBron this situation. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So same for you, easy top ten or is he um. Out he is definitely in the top half. Um, <laughs> top 16. <laughs> no, no, like, he, he's definitely in the top half. Like, again, I, I hate the Falcons, but if he's my quarterback, I wouldn't be, like, upset about it. I really wouldn't because I feel like he gets – quarterbacks in general get a lot of the blame, and it, a lot of it has nothing to do with them. Like, I know people talk about, oh, he's not clutch because of what happened in the Super Bowl. People call him Matty Ice for a reason. Now, he ain't going to go throw a game-winning touchdown pass. But if you need somebody to get you past the 50-yard line to where your kicker can kick the field goal to win the game, Matt Ryan's the guy. And he kind of always has been. Now, lately, you know, yeah. since 17, yeah. it's been a little different. Been if we had kicked that ball, we would have a Super Bowl ring right now. If, if what? So – if we had kicked the ball in the Super Bowl, we would have had a, we would have a Super Bowl ring right now. So I I think Matt Ryan is better than really what like a lot of Falcons fans try to say he's not. I think he's Agreed. a really good quarterback. So um, so uh so what you just said, if you had him on the Saints, what would you with him with a offensive genius? Because I think Sean Payton is an offensive genius. With an offensive genius like Sean, we're continuous. We're continuous. We're we're NFC Championship. We're making the playoff. Do you think – because I think in this playoff, Drew Brees kind of held the team back a little bit because yeah, of his don't get, don't get me started on that. He's got to go. <laughs> do, you think I, with, it, it, do you think they would have beat the Bucks with Matt Ryan if they had had Absolutely. Matt Ryan? Okay. Absolutely. We'd have been more, it wouldn't have been a game. We would have been more efficient because I feel like Matt Ryan – It would have looked more like our week one win against the Bucks than the uh, – I guess what we played in what, week nine – yeah. It would have looked more like the week one game. But, I mean, Matt's Ryan, Matt Ryan's, what, 36? 35? Yeah. 35, 36. Yeah, man. 36-year-old Matt Ryan, we would, we would gladly take him at this point. I mean, yep. I love Drew. I got two jerseys of him. He's, like, one of my favorite athletes see, of all time. See right, here by, see right here behind me. But, there he is. I mean, if you know the quarterback can't throw it, you know, 20 yards down the field, a la Chad Pennington, like – they're going to press up on your receivers and they're going to make these tight windows and it's going to be hard to get passes completely. It's just that's, that's, what it is. I think Michael Thomas was saying something about uh, it's easy to um, to defend against a quarterback if it doesn't have a deep throw or something like that. Where It, it pretty much sounded like he was coming after Drew Brees. Um, I don't know, man. I feel like we're not giving enough credit to that Tampa defense, though. Uh, and I think they they've it last- definitely gotten better. But my issue with Tampa's defense is that their secondary is not great. Okay. But their front seven is amazing, which covers up the issues that they have in the secondary. I mean, right. you got Sue, you got Vita Vea, you got um, JPP, you got Shaquille Barrett. I mean, they don't have to blitz. They can send four with just those guys. You got Devin White, you got Levante David, which, you know, kudos to him. He's been – on trash Buccaneers teams his whole career. So, you know, Finally kudos to him it. for sticking around and, you know, <laughs> getting making it to the Super Bowl. But what? that front seven is very elite, and it covers up a lot of the secondary's flaw. Mm. Yeah, we'll t- well, I think we'll be able to touch more on uh, the Super Bowl uh, with the Buc- – one of the best important things that we got to remember that nobody else has is Tom Brady has a pack with the devil because how the hell that man got to his 10th Super Bowl. Home yeah. Hey, six, you and 16 agree on that. Uh, he does. He has a pack with the devil. He has something going on. Uh, Zeno, <laughs> is there any other questions, uh, Saints related? Um, well, no, the other question was Falcons, but that one's yours. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. So obviously, as y'all know by now, Terry Fontenot is our new GM. He was an assistant GM with the Saints before he came over to the Falcons. So, what do you guys think of a Terry Fontenot uh, hire? And since it's inevitable that players usually come from a, the other organization that somebody comes from, what's the one player 
that if Terry Fontenot brought him over here to Atlanta, y'all would want to burn down Atlanta that came from that would come from the Saints. <laughs> Alvin Kamara. You, you. Oh well, that ain't yeah, that ain't happening. That ain't happening. I got some realistic options for you guys though, because um, we got some cap issues going on. Um, first of all, Terry Fontenot is a great. Hire. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> but Terry Fontenot is a great hire. Um, I think right away you guys will see improvement in how the way you guys draft and evaluate players um, because, you know, he was our director of scouting, college scouting. So the Michael Thomases, the Sheldon Rankins, the Alvin Kamara's of the world, he was the guy in charge of, like, going find those guys. I know Mickey Loomis and Jeff Ireland get a lot of credit for that, but he really spearheaded that part of our team. So I think right away you guys will see, like, drafts look much better they might you might not be a fan of the pick at first but you know you'll see um <laughs> players that potentially might go to the from the Saints to the Falcons for me I could definitely see y'all going after Marcus Williams because he drafted Marcus Williams he scouted Marcus Williams um Trey Hendrickson's also a free agent I believe if you could for the less savvy of us could you see what position they play Okay, yeah. So Marcus Williams uh, is our free safety. Um, I would consider him a. There you go. Uh, <laughs> I would consider him very elite. I think he's still young. He's only like 23, 24. I don't know if we have enough money to pay him to bring him back, but he, I know he's a free agent unless we franchise tag him. Um, and then Trey Hendrickson, defensive end, he was like second in the league in sacks this year. I think he had like 13 and a half. And we're not going to be able um, to pay him. We're not going to be able to pay him because pass rushers are like behind left tackle and quarterback. They're hella expensive. So I don't know if we'll be able to bring him back. But I, those are two people like right off the bat. I can see him going after because um, both of them are part of that 2017 draft class um, that, you know, again, he spearheaded and was a big part of bringing him onto the team. I just thought of something crazy. Right? You're talking about the guy that uh, you guys aren't going to be able to pay. And the Falcons have the number four pick. And by a lot of people's words and other stuff, they are not trying to replace Matt Ryan. They're not going to tr- trade Matt Ryan. They might not pick a quarterback. And I think the only person out there that's worth top four that's not a quarterback is that Panay Soul dude. And if he's gone, what if they trade that number four to the Saints to get no. one of your bigger guys? No. Well, yeah, I don't. First of all, I'm vetoing that right now. And then, no. and, yeah, and yeah. then and they get the quarterback of the future. Trades. Right. That ain't yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, that. I don't think that'll happen. Okay. But that'd be um, crazy. I mean, that's a good point. Um I haven't really paid it I haven't really like got into the draft class yet because I haven't been bothered in sixteen about the prospects we should go after yet. But yeah, it's you're coming. right. It's very quarterback, wide receiver, offensive lineman heavy. I mean, hell if y'all wanna <laughs> You know, score forty points a game. Go get Jamar Chase or Devonte Smith. I mean, shit, nobody's gonna stop y'all. Julio, Calvin Ridley, and one Timothy. of those guys. That'd yeah, be ridiculous. We're already good with wide receivers. I don't think we need Devonte. Yeah, I mean, hell, Russell Gage, LSU guy. Um, yeah, pretty he's good. Been doing all right, he's been doing pretty good actually. Yeah, y'all love what's drafting these uh, Louisiana about, boys. Uh, I don't get that shit. What's his uh, What's his motif, uh, motive? I mean, his favorite is a defense or offense? Do you think? I think. I don't know if he has really a side. I don't remember his background. I, he's mostly been like a scout. Um, I mean, the guy's just got a good eye for talent. He's been in the organization over a decade for sure. Yeah, he's been. He, I think he was with the with the Saints for thirteen years before. Yeah, he's, and actually, Loomis, he's, he's a Louisiana guy. He's from Louisiana. Yeah, Loomis actually uh, called up Arthur Blank and said, "You know, you took away my general manager, like my my hair apparent. He was gonna be the heir apparent." Yeah. So, Absolutely. So uh, I was actually going to say, because I wonder what you think maybe he'll do is build around Grady Jarrett. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that, guys? Yeah, I, I just think he's <laughs> just going to focus on just getting you guys, like, talent. Um, I think, I think honestly, on the offensive side of the ball, I wouldn't prioritize anything except, like, offensive line, just because I know you guys have had a lot of injuries there and yeah. you know, drafted some guys that haven't really performed to expectation. Fix that um, secondary. That yeah, defense is definitely where I would. I think you're right, Zeus. Uh, besides uh, Deion Jones, linebackers could use some touch and love, tender love and care. 
Secondary definitely could. Um, what about the, I know y'all picked Terrell. AJ Terrell. Yeah, y'all picked AJ Terrell, and I really don't know why because just go Google twenty nine. Look, twenty nineteen national championship game LSU versus Clemson. I got you, but you know AJ what? Terrell got you destroyed. Gotta, what though. about AJ every Terrell other game? Turned out to be the best rookie cl- in the rookie class. Yeah, and what That's about every other game much. in his college That's career? Not, I promise y'all, that is not saying much. Do not bank. It's like dog y'all are better fields. banking on a banged up Keanu <laughs> Neal than AJ Terrell. Please a, don't do it to uh, yourself. <laughs> All right, uh, uh, sixteen. You got anything to add to this? Well, I, I can understand why the see during this run with Sean Payton, we picked up a lot of obscure talent that people weren't really checking for. That kind of turned into I won't necessarily say stars, but very serviceable people, borderline stars. Like you look at Marcus Colston. You know, somebody like that who was damn near Mr. Irrelevant, who was great for us until, you know, it was nine years of him just being steady. So I feel like the pickup in getting Fontenot was to try to find some of that obscure talent, some of those hidden gems to kind of push you, push you guys, you know, over the top and then, you know, trending in the right direction. Because it seemed like ever since the Super Bowl, it's been step back after step back. And maybe he's trying to, you know, get a different mentality of trying some obscure talent build through the draft and see where you are. I'm sure he's going to get a game plan going where it's not going to be right away. But if you could say that you're contending for the division in two years, he would have been doing his job really well. Yeah, those value for money type players. Yeah. Um, uh, That's how question. you win. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's not really the superstars. It's like the, yep. the role players. Uh, quick question. I know we said we're done with the Saints, but I just thought of um, one more. Um. You guys sounded like you had soured on Breeze. Do you think he's done, or do you think he'll try and play another year? I, I think like, he's done, but I wouldn't be shocked if he comes back. I, I feel like he's 100% coming back um, just due to the fact of how he went out. Um, and he's to this point where he's a quarterback where he's enough to win you 10 games and get you to the playoffs, but that's about the ceiling. He can get you there. He can, he can – and – that's that's ba- if okay. Let me just say this. I don't, you know, I don't know how long you've been watching football. I know, um, more like 12, 12, 13 years, maybe. Okay. Oh yeah. So you so, know the Saints is only good. That's interesting. Yeah, that, that is not that is a mirage. But I was gonna say the blue, <laughs> the, the blue, <laughs> the blueprint. Look, man, to your to your quarterback is Billy Joe Tolliver and Billy Joe Holbert. You don't know struggle, but the blueprint for winning with an aging quarterback. If you go back and just look at the team, the 97 Denver Broncos and the 98, the 97 and 98 Denver Broncos gave everyone the blueprint. If you have an aging quarterback in his late 30s, they showed every – Mike Shanahan showed you how you can win a Super Bowl with an aging quarterback. You run the damn ball. I keep screaming that. I know Easy gets mad at me. You, you run, run the damn ball, okay? Run it down their throat. You had a good offensive line. You play defense. 16. I know this. You know how I know this? Because even though I've only been watching uh, football really hardcore since 2008, that aging quarterback beat us for a Super Bowl ring. So I know exactly what they're talking about. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, like, uh, Zeus, I've only been watching, you know, for like 12, 13 years. But um, I do, I'm one of those people that goes into like. Educate yourself. Yeah. I I go into like. Yeah, Yeah. 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 Because you got to prove your worth at the table when you're talking to other fans. So right, right. Yep. So um, I've seen I've seen Super Bowl videos from '98 and all that stuff. But Broncos did it again with Manning to to an extent. You yeah. Know? Yep. It was with the same. It was, was the same formula. I've, I've been but screaming about. Was on that team, he knew what he yeah. had to do. I've been screaming about this during this four year run that the Saints have. Is that I keep to, he's probably sick of me saying I was like we need to play like the the '97 Broncos. They were beating teams that they had no business beating. Sean Elway wasn't in his prime anymore. He just did not turn the ball over. They ran the ball down you. And then once you got your guard let down, they took the top off the, the defense. It, it was a formula. That's offensive line, get a pass rush, run the damn ball. Super Bowl. <laughs> do, you think, uh, do you think that Drew Brees is going to kind of get that, uh, that Kobe Bryant treatment of, yeah, you're not really doing what you were doing before? But we're gonna. You gave us a ring, you know. You gave us all the success. Yeah, you can come back. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, no I'm a huge. I'm a hypocrite, but I I know I'm saying I don't want him back next year. 
But I was literally telling my brother this like, last year and the year before that, you know, 16's been saying, hey, Drew's got to go for a minute. And I'm like, look, dude, we have too much loyalty to this guy to just tell him no and make him go hit the free agent market and then end his career with, like, you know, Jacksonville or something. Yeah. Like, uh, you're, Zeus, you're right. Like, if he says, I want to come back, they're going to – He's Get coming back. They're going to figure out cap right, space, right, and they're going to bring him back. I'm a sucker for gonna let somebody like Jameis Winston just walk out the door. Like, we literally did it last year with Teddy B, and it irritated me to my soul. I'm a like, sucker for Drew's like, I'm back. For, he's for, like, Teddy B's like, let him go. For the uh, aging players in the different sports getting their farewell tour, like, you noticed it last year, and every um, stadium they go to, everyone's like, you know, saluting. I just don't think that works in football. Yeah. In yeah, football, a, especially with a QB, QB like you saw with Peyton Manning probably wasn't going to retire the year that he retired, but it was just that his play went down all of a sudden that he was. Yeah. That, but he won a Super Bowl ring, so he's like, might as well retire now. But, There's no yep. point of me coming back and you know but having the sour he last year. Up, he showed up towards the end of the regular season when Osweiler started to dip, and they brought him in against the Chargers. And Manning didn't like throw like a 50 yard bomb or anything, but he like. He was the field general, you know, doing the whole <laughs> Omaha thing. Like, all of a sudden, he could see the defense. And everyone's like, oh, this is the guy, you know. And he took them to the Super Bowl. Nine the touchdowns, Bowl. 17 interceptions is what he was that season. He threw for 150 yards in the Super Bowl. It's amazing. But speaking of Super Bowl, <laughs> speaking of that Super Bowl specific, I asked people, and they say they didn't see this part, but I swear I saw this. Anybody else, because I haven't seen clips of it, Anybody else see Brock Osweiler slamming his helmet down during the Super Bowl? Like, at the, close to the end of the game? No. I didn't. No. Mm-mm. I swear, if I if I had that recorded, I could probably find it. I swear I saw him just slamming it down and pissed off because he didn't get to play in the Super Bowl. And then, too bad for him, he didn't get to play. Two years later, he was out of the league. I was actually in New Orleans. He got that. paid, though. Keep getting the he check, did. Brock. Jesus. He, he got a ring, man. Come on. Get, a, get him out of here. Right. I was actually in New Orleans for Mardi Gras uh, during the Super Bowl that year. Just random tidbits. Um, <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. It's, a good, it's a good place to be. Yeah. Probably, yeah, drinking, yeah. probably drinking Hurricane. Uh, yes, for sure. And uh, grenade. I, I definitely liked it. I, I'd only been there one other time, and that's when I was 17 years old. So I was happy to be back in New Orleans. Oh, yeah, yeah. You couldn't have fun like you did. Of course not. That and I was around. there with my parents because it was like a college tour for um, Tulane University. Too expensive. Oh, um, you you smart man. <laughs> Shit. I do. Right. He knows, he knows a smart one here, yeah. Um all right. So, the next topic is the uh Super Bowl, of course. Um that's the that big game that's coming up this Sunday. Uh we have those six questions that I want to throw at the three of you to, you know, see which way you think it's going to go. You guys ready? ready? Yes. Yep. All right. Who do you think is going to have more passing yards? Uh Brady or Mahomes? Or uh, is it Henny? Is that the other guy? The we have oh god, Chad Henny or Blaine <laughs> Gabbert? Jesus Christ! Yeah, <laughs> no, but yeah. So who's gonna have uh, the most passing yards this game? Uh, oh, we'll start with um, easy. Uh, Brady. Brady. I'm sixteen. Yeah, I'm gonna say Brady too. Brady. Okay. Zeus. I'm gonna go with Brady because I honestly think that uh, the Kansas City Chiefs are gonna get a little bit far ahead that they they're gonna have to throw the ball. So I'm gonna say Brady. Zeus thinking the same. Thinking the same. Same here. That's my mentality. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm gonna be the outlier. I'm gonna say Mahomes uh, just because I don't want to be the same as the rest of you. All right. So we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll go back the other way then. Um, more passing touchdowns. Um, I think. This one I actually do think Brady. So, oh, oh actually, no, sorry, it's the teams. Uh, more passing touchdown, Buccaneers. Uh, Zeus. I'm gonna go with the. Uh, I'm gonna go with the Buccaneers too on the passing touchdowns. I'm sixteen. I'm I'm gonna go with the Chiefs on that one. Chiefs, okay. Yep. Uh, easy. I'm going Chiefs because they do not run the ball at the goal line or in the red zone. So yeah, Chiefs. Yeah, it's always one of these. Underhand thingies. All right. Yeah, um, don't forget the little uh, shovel passes count as a touchdown pass, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, most receptions, this one could be anybody, right? So um, let's start with M16. Who do you think is going to have the most receptions during this game? I think Travis Kelsey is going to eat. 
Um, the Buccaneers cannot really cover tight ends. Tight ends have eaten on them all year. And name me somebody on their defense that can guard that pterodactyl Kelsey, you tell me. So I feel like he's the one that's going to have the most pass and uh, he's going to have the most reception yards. All right. Easy. Uh, most receptions, I'm going a different route. I'm going Sammy Watkins. 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 Okay. Um, uh, I'm going to say Mike Evans. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mike Evans. I'm not, it's not a question. It is. It's Mike Evans. Uh, is this? I'm actually going to go with Mike Evans, too, only because, like I said, based off of the fact that Tom Brady's going to have to try to – I think he's going to try to have to catch up. Mike Evans is going to get a lot of attention because I don't think it'll be Gronk. You think, I, I think they're going to double um, Hill and Kelsey a lot, so I think Watkins is going to have a lot of room to play with. Okay. You think Antonio Brown's going to play? They, he, he fully practiced today. He's playing. Okay. Don't even worry about it. He's playing. Yeah, but he, he doesn't be getting much attention, I don't think, from Tom Brady. You know, he's he did just, all right against um, he had he a against the Saints was streak it? toward or, the end of the season. Was it yeah. against the Saints or against Washington that he had a decent game? He um, didn't score a TD or he didn't. I don't remember him playing on. I don't remember him. Side. Yeah, I don't remember him. It must that have well. been a Washington game. Hmm. Okay. Because Mike Evans definitely had a good game. Okay. So I know you guys said that um, Tampa will be playing from behind. So I kind of feel like I know where this is gonna, going. But. Um, which team is going to have more takeaways? Uh, let's go. Let's go to Zeus first. Uh, I'm gonna definitely go with uh, with Chiefs. They're going to get more takeaways. Um, Honey Badger is trying to get the MVP. That dude is playing lights out. He going. He's going to get at least one. No. And I trust Mahomes against the Buccaneers defense more than I trust trust Tom Brady against the Kansas City Chiefs defense. So I'm gonna definitely go with Kansas City Chiefs. And I and I and I say uh, Honey Badger is going to get at least one. All right, easy. Zeus is reading my mind tonight because I was thinking the exact same thing. Um, that's right. Uh, <laughs> I, Tyron Matthews definitely going to have a hell of a game. And to be honest, the Chiefs' defense isn't great. But what do they do? They get takeaways. Yeah. They get the ball back to Patrick Mahomes. So I'm going with the Chiefs. And you're right because you know what? Defenses don't have to be great. But if you if you start writing off of the energy of your offense – all of a sudden, you just start playing lights out. You just look, start playing Look, I know, you know it was almost a decade ago, but the two th- our championship team, that defense was ranked 28th in yards allowed. But we were number one in takeaways. And that's all you got to care about. Yeah, you could throw for 400 yards. You could throw for 500 yards. But if I got two fumbles and two picks, I'm winning the game. So, <laughs> you know, you could throw for 400 all you want as long as you get takeaway. Okay. Um, I think... I, I do think the Chiefs' defense uh, are going to get to Tom Brady uh, just because of what they did against uh, Josh Allen last week. And I think Josh Allen's one of the um, one of the star quarterbacks of the league, and he was ineffective against the Chiefs' defense. That being said, I think it's going to be more um, three and outs and less you know, interceptions and fumbles. So I'm going to go with Buccaneers for more takeaways. Uh, and 16, for- you gave your piece on them? Yeah, okay. Um, I would say the Chiefs. Um, I think they're going to have more opportunities to get turnovers because I feel like they're going to be down a ton and, you know, you're going to make some errant throws and some mistakes because you're trying to claw back in the game. So I'm going to go with the Chiefs on that one. I saw a lot of that in the NFC Championship game where uh, they weren't necessarily down, but a lot of, like, throws that were kind of ill-advised just because yep. nothing was there and then yep. led to a pick. So I could see that. Um, all right. Who's going to be leading at halftime? Let's go with... 16. Um, I feel like the Chiefs are going to be leading at halftime. Um, yeah. You want to you you give a spread? I, yeah, maybe seven. Nothing too major at that point. Okay. A touchdown, at least. Zeus. I'm going to say the Chiefs, and I'm going to go, it's probably going to be like 7-14 or 14-21. Is it like, like, like 16 set? One, one, one score. Yep. Okay. Easy. Uh, I'm gonna say the Bucks. Bucks are gonna be leading. Okay. Um, At halftime. Chiefs. Have hey, that's how that's how uh, Mahomes won all the last play, all those playoff games last year, including the Super Bowl mm-hmm. from behind. Yes, he did. He was down by nine against the Bills. Um. Mm, I I 
Ooh. I'm going to say the Chiefs. I'm going to say it's going to be a three-point game. Actually, you know what? No. No. I'm going to say it's a tie at halftime. Okay. okay. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah. So okay. Like you asked the question. You created the question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there we go. Tie. Um, all right. And then the last question, who's going to be the Super Bowl champs? Uh, I'll, I'll start off. I'm going to say the Chiefs. I just feel like... And the MVP. Who's going to be the MVP? Oh, okay. Ooh, That's good. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm going to say Chiefs. I'm going to say it's someone on defense. It was, is that guy's name Sorensen or whatever? They have a guy like that? The linebacker? Okay. Yeah. I'm going to say him. Um, MVP. Chiefs win. Uh, let's go easy. Uh, I, I definitely hope the Chiefs will win. I really think... And, you know, this could be a hot take or whatever. Um, I really feel like the Chiefs might make the Super Bowl for, like, the next three years. Um, that's how good I think they are. So four in a row? I really – like, especially in the AFC, you know, unless Josh Allen steps it up now, I agree with Zeno. I think Josh Allen's probably, like, a top-five quarterback right now, and that's not too far stretched. But – Not top ten. They <laughs> – Anyway, he's, he's not uh, that drop off. <laughs> I don't. I don't think, like, you got the Chiefs in the AFC, and then the drop off to like the number two seed or the three seed is a lot. I really think they have a, a good two to three years that they can keep going, coming back to the Super Bowl. But I'm gonna go with the Chiefs. Uh, but I think the game's gonna be a lot closer than than people think, just because Tom Brady's been there before and he knows he knows what he's doing. How these things go. Yeah. If not. Um... Coming back to Super Bowl, I do think the Chiefs will consistently be in the top two seeds in the AFC and will likely always be in the AFC championship game. Yeah, they're uh, they're gonna be like the Patriots. Yeah, mm-hmm. pretty much. Um but so, oh uh MVP, oh. Uh, I'm gonna go with Mahomes because they always try to pick the quarterback. Yeah. More often than not, I was going for like a surprise pick, um uh, like yeah. a lot of sacks or something. There are um, they, you know, that was a good pick because you know Malcolm Smith won a won the MVP that Seahawks Super Bowl. <laughs> and then he was a second stringer the next uh, the next season. Yep, there you go. Zeus? Uh, I'm going to go with, I'm hoping that it's the Chiefs. I don't think anybody on this podcast right now is going to be thinking, it's hoping it's somebody else. Uh, I'm going to say the Chiefs, and I really do, uh, Terry Matt, I think Honey Badger is going to get that MVP. I think that dude is going to win him, basically win him that Super Bowl. Like, that dude wants it, and then I agree with you, Easy. I don't know about four in a row, but I honestly feel that Kansas City Chiefs, if they win this one, which I hope, they have the greatest chance of being the very first team to three-peat. And here's the key to that team real quick. All of their good players are locked up. They yep. all have contracts. All of their good players are and Andy locked Reed knows up how to, he for knows how to years. Draft. That, that's what I'm saying. They... You know, they got weapons. All their weapons are locked up. Kelsey's under contract. Tyreek Hill's under contract at a very modest discount, by the way. Frank Clark, all they playmakers are under contract. So they can definitely keep making a run. All right. M16. Last but not least. So so with with this game, you got to look at it that. So Brady, he's been in. This is his 10th Super Bowl. Each one of those Super Bowls that he's been in have all been one score games. So he could easily be nine and oh, he could be 0 and nine. Um, that being said, I feel like this is probably going to be his first Super Bowl ass whipping, like more than two scores because the Chiefs are nothing to play with. They get down, it's like they want to get down because they want to play with you. Like, all right, let's go ahead and play now. So I like the Chiefs. It may start off close. I like them big in the end. I think Tyreek Hill is going to end up being the MVP. Okay. The um, Chiefs are like the Warriors, like yeah, you know, you can beat up span. thirty points against the Warriors and you're still scared because Clay Thompson and we, Curry are gonna we, like we, we live that nightmare easy. That's not remind remind us of their playoff game. We live that nightmare. You should have uh, seen the, it coming. Uh how did the first game go? Because they played against each other this season, right? The Chiefs and the Bucks. Yeah, so the Chiefs won by three. Yeah. But I think I don't think the game was that close because uh, Tyreek Hill had like two hundred and Zeno, Tyreek Hill had like 200 some yards. I was up 40 in fantasy and oh. 56 points. So, yeah, oh, I remember yeah. that. Oh. I remember that. Oh, fantasy yeah. football. Hey, Bullshit. look, man, a good portion of our viewer subscribership plays fantasy. I don't right, know listen, if that's true. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it right now. I think 
Zeno and EZ, y'all should have your own fantasy football show. Mm. Because I, I think did. y'all would definitely geek out, and y'all, and I, I might watch it just to learn some shit about like fantasy football. Yeah, yeah. I would like to rank in. I don't, I don't know. I would like who to sit. I'm here. Yeah, I would like to, to to watch that. I would not be any kind of efficient as far as being on it. I yeah, but I would definitely watch it. You know, YouTube has like sister channels and brother channels type things. You can have it as a separate channel, and then be like, "Hey, subscribe to this channel as well." Heck, we'll That's do it. YouTube. That's you too. Yeah, we'll Why do a fan- fantasy football show. All right, it's decided. Um, that's, <laughs> that's like eight months away. All right, uh, cool. That's our Super Bowl predictions. So basically, the Chiefs are going to win. Uh, I really hope so. I, I don't want another break. You know uh, what? We don't really hate Tampa as much as like. Oh, wait, well, speak for yourself. The I do. In the division. No, I, I hate them nah, very much. I, I agree with you, Easy. Did, did you see that dig? It's us. It's us. <laughs> It's us. We hate yeah, each it's, other the most. It's, it's yeah, yeah. people, other teams in the NFC South. Look, the NFC South is the Saints versus the Falcons. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gonna have to accept yeah. that. Ours is the best rivalry. It's the biggest rivalry. Um, Tampa Bay. Don't get me wrong, they're, but I think it's because they've been in obscurity for so damn long. Yeah, that's why you don't really have that much. Exactly. Yeah, this is their first playoff appearance since 2007. And if you want to try to guess who their quarterback was, uh, pretty bad. <laughs> No, I don't have it. But, but I was gonna sixteen say, actually told me and it blew my mind. I didn't even think about him. Who is it? Who was it? Which one? The quarterback when they won the Super Bowl? You mean? No, 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 no. With the last time they were in the playoff. Oh dang! Even I forgot it's so obscure. In 07? man, I, I think you told me Jim oh, Garcia. No, nah, um, was it Jim Garcia? I can't. I can't remember. That's how long ago it was, and they were yeah, so insignificant John, in those John playoffs. Freeman wasn't their quarterback yet. I don't think. No, not yet. Yeah, I, I can't remember. Obscure Tampa Bay reference in 07. Yeah. <laughs> People tuning out in droves. In the individual clip, we'll, we'll put it there. We'll say, it's this guy. We'll put the name. Um, uh, what was I about to ask? Um, oh, no. I was, I was just going to say, for me, um, I, don't, I actually don't mind Brady winning this year as much as previous years just because of the Tampa of it all. No, you know, that's the wrong answer. No, no. Had it been Patriots, I'd be like, no, I definitely don't want Brady to win. But I, I want the Chiefs to win. If Brady wins, I'll be like, damn it. But I wouldn't be like too hurt by it. But anyway, I'm sure it's going to be a good game. Uh, one last thing to jump into. Uh, it's going to be more of an entertainment section, even though we, we kind of did that in our regular show yesterday. Uh, we want to get a sense of you guys and like what you like entertainment-wise. Um, was I going to do the... Uh, Golden Globes thing is that correct? Is that what we decided? Yeah, we can do the Golden Globes. Uh, w- so we're gonna do two things. We're gonna ask your reactions um, in regards to the Golden Globes, and the second thing is we did a top five on our, our last episode that we recorded yesterday. Uh, our top five was because, like I told Zeno, January was a long six months, and we forgot oh, to shit. do top. <laughs> we forgot to do our top five of shows that we're looking forward to or movies that we're looking forward to in, in 2021. So that's gonna be. So if y'all want to think about that, like what's the number one show like i gotta watch this coming th- before when it comes out and also movie but uh Zeno, you yeah you want to ask the question about the golden Globes? yeah so i was gonna ask first of all is do you guys care about like awards shows and all that stuff oh that's a fun that's a funny thing that you uh, mentioned that Zeno, because with us being like sort of a hip-hop show every time we're on the air and there's like an award show nobody that's like a running thing with us nobody ever watched the award show and one of our hosts will come on and say, yep, there was an award show. And we're a hip-hop show, and nobody watched it. Nobody. So, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, because uh, the question I was going to ask is, do, are there any shows that you guys have seen over the past year that you guys are, like, really, um, really high on? And then you see, like, these awards come out, like the Golden Globe nominations, and your show isn't even, like, on the map. And if so, what, what shows would, would, would you count in that list? That's a good question. That is a good question. I'll tell you this, you know, I don't pay attention to the award shows uh, as much as I used to. But what I do know about the Golden Globe nominations is based off of headlines. Mm. Apparently, The Crown has a shit ton of nominations. It's a good show. And apparently, Netflix as a whole has a shit ton of nominations for a lot of their shows. That's that's basically what I know about the Golden Globe nominations. I'm pretty sure Netflix funds the Hollywood Foreign Press Association because there's honestly that's what no, I'm saying. I heard no that they, they like 
they have a shit ton of nominations, not just with the crown. I think the crown had like what? But you you also got to think about think the fact leading. that the last year was hit by the pandemic. So some shows that were supposed to come out didn't come out, but Netflix still had a lot of shows coming that, out. That's true. Well, but I Netflix say the crown always, is a very good show. Yeah, Netflix always leads in the, in the Golden Globes, at least for like the last not a not a decade, but like last half decade. It's been The Crown. It's been, well, The Queen's Gambit this year has uh, a couple of uh, numbers. Well, it's kind of like uh, uh, M16 said in in his show, uh, in y'all's show last week, which was like, yo, they're coming out, Netflix is coming out with a movie every single week. Yeah. You know, so it's just like, no, it's like they 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 could just keep popping out. So you oversaturate the department, which we talked about oversaturation today, but uh, you over, you know, you throw so many things out there, they're going to get nominations. Yeah. Um, what streaming services do you guys have? Shit, all of them. All like, of the above. Yeah. All, all of the above. <laughs> all right. So Disney Plus, yes. Yep. What is yes. your favorite thing on Disney Plus so far? Do you feel like it's been worth it? Seven bucks a month. I mean, basically, I got it because my uh, my oldest daughter is for The Simpsons. It's the main reason why we got all the episodes of The Simpsons. So that was a big selling point. I would have paid seven dollars a month just to have all The Simpsons, you know, on, on demand. But that's really the only thing I've been watching on Disney Plus, my uh, wife and oldest daughter have been watching WandaVision. I know you guys have been doing the reviews on it, but I haven't I haven't seen an episode of it yet. Thanks for the plug. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, yeah, I was going to mention that too. I still watch our reviews anyway, though. But yeah. yeah. It's been spoiler filled, but <laughs> I hope you still enjoy the show when you do. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, okay, Simpsons, I would not have guessed that. Uh, what about you, Easy? What, what is it on Disney Plus that keeps you there? So, I. I have the bundle with Hulu, Disney Plus, and ESPN Plus, and I will say the Disney Plus of it, I probably have not been getting my money's worth because I'm not on that as much. Uh, but the Mandalorian by itself is worth the seven bucks a month or whatever the bundle is because I haven't watched season two yet, but I'm definitely about to catch up on it. Bro, I've heard on. good things about WandaVision. I watched you guys review about it, so those are the two I'm, I'm going to be glued to probably for the next few weeks. Uh, for any of the viewers who haven't seen the WandaVision review, do not do what Easy and M16 do. Don't watch the reviews before you watch the show. <laughs> watch them. It's, it's after, very, we go into spoiler, spoiler territory. It's, it's spoiler territory. Oh, hey, 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 look, I could care less about spoilers. So. Okay, well, that's, that's good. Um, yeah, so, one, too. you got to watch Mandalorian season two. Come on, man. Uh, and two, uh, it got a Golden Globe nomination for Best Drama, which I was not expecting. So. For uh, you said WandaVision or Mandalorian? No, no, Mandalorian. Mandalorian. Oh, man, it's so interesting. Good. That first season was yeah. excellent. Yeah, you wouldn't well, expect you know, that it's from crazy, a like, sci-fi. Well, Zeno says because they never nominate um, sci-fi shows. Really, None of, really. Obviously, none of the Star Wars ever got nominated for like best movies. Or they, they see. I think they're starting to realize like this is an actual market that normal people watch. It's yeah, no longer right. about what the you know what the who oh, the critics like this. No, now it's about what yeah, do you throw in the baby and Yoda. That, but they're actually yeah, shows yeah. of substance now too. I, I, I wouldn't say never because uh, people te- seem to forget that uh, Star Trek, um, uh, is it the next generation? No, not next generation. The one with uh, Picard. Um, oh, got a lot of Emmy nominations during his time. I know because I read a lot of Wikipedia articles. I could say, but did you see him? Because I don't Wikipedia think we were alive during that time. I, yeah, we were alive. It was early 90s. Um, oh, well, I wasn't watching. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah they've got a lot of nominations. So, um, but yes, you're right. The, Generally, sci-fi is seen as not highbrow enough. So to see Mandalorian on there is, was good. Uh, I think Lovecraft Country got a nomination as well. Um, so things the same just, people that direct and produce the Mandalorian are those the, the ones that do the movies? Because if not, no. they need to go ahead and yeah. Mandalorian no. people, y'all need to take over the movies. Because yeah, a, not... a lot of the fans have been saying that it's um, John Favreau, obviously Iron Man. Um, and um, Dave Filoni, who did uh, the Attack of the Clones, uh, no, sorry, the, the Clone Wars um, show on Cartoon Network. Yeah, check out check out our, our last show between me and Zeno, um, where we talk about oversaturation in the media, because we actually do touch on Star Wars, and we actually touch on this too, about there ends up being a problem with different damn producers touching the movies, specifically the Star Wars movies, and they just like, but what did you say? Like the third movie was trying to contradict and make up for everything that happened yeah, in the second movie, and it, it's just like it was trying to retcon. So basically, it boiled down to you could tell that once you finished episode nine, um, you realize that when they started making episode seven, they had no idea where they were going to end up with episode nine. Most things like 
like uh, you hear about um, Avengers Infinity War and Endgame, where the Russo brothers were filming them at the same time because they had a beginning and an end. It was basically a, a five and a half hour movie for them. Whereas the Star Wars trilogy, this latest trilogy, they made episode seven and they were like, okay, we'll see where we go from there. And um, yes. <laughs> Ryan Johnson took it in one direction that people really hated, you know, as far as Luke Skywalker. I, I, I didn't hate it. I actually thought it was a, an okay movie. Um, and then episode nine came and Luke in that movie was like, oh yeah, you know the thing I said in episode eight? Yeah, I didn't mean it. Or <laughs> something. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's basically yeah. what I was like. Oh, wow. yeah, so, so I hate it when they don't plan out, you know, where they, they wanted to go. MCU hasn't had that problem yet. We'll, we'll see. But um, yeah, Favreau and Filoni, the showrunners of The Mandalorian, they're doing a really good job. And yeah, they should do some, some features for um, Star Wars. So real quickly, guys, what, um, like I said, we did our top five in our last episode of uh, shows that we were looking forward to for the rest of 2021. What are shows and what movies are you guys looking forward to the most? Uh, what's your top pick of like, I got to watch this once it comes out? Uh, uh, Easy, you go first. Um, I already said my answer with the TV shows. Definitely Mandalorian, WandaVision, definitely looking forward to those. Those Apparently are already out, so I'm talking about the ones that are out, coming. Oh, well, coming up, um, All-American, I think they got a new season coming out this year, so definitely looking forward to that. If you haven't watched it, CW content is hella underrated. They make some great shows, Black Lightning and All-American, just the name, too. Uh, movies, Black Widow, definitely looking forward to that one. Okay. M16? Um, for TV, uh, definitely looking forward to the last season of Ozark. If you haven't watched Ozark, you're missing out. That's a Pretty solid show all the way around. Great acting. It's kind of oh, dark, but it's definitely all good. Oh, hey, we got to talk, man. You, what says you not seeing the Wire business? We need to discuss that. I what? haven't seen the Wire. Doesn't mean I'm not going to see the Wire. Where you been? No, it. the fact that you have not seen the Wire is in itself a problem that we no, need I to discuss. I told you what happened, right? It was on Prime. <laughs> you remember? Uh, me and you used to have opportunities to be able to watch shows during the day. Yes. Yes. <laughs> And that was one of those shows that I was going to knock out, but it was on Prime, and I was like, ah, I can watch it anytime I want, you know, and I never got started. And then once it can't, once it left Prime, I was like, ah, oh, crap, but now I got HBO Max. Zeus, I made the, the same gonna... exact mistake with The Wire, because 16 got on my ass about it for a long time. And I was like, okay, I finished season one, and then when I go to get season two, it was off of Prime. I was like, oh, <laughs> You got like... Max now, right? You got HBO Max? No, I need to get it. Oh, okay. Yeah, because uh, that's where I'm going to go watch it. Yeah, you should okay. get it. Um, it's got a lot of good content on there. Um, yeah, man. What's the wire? What the hell? Uh, yes. <laughs> I'm also trying to get him on uh, on anime. We talked about it yesterday. Um, I said if you're trying to get into anime, probably a an entry point that is kind of lighthearted is probably My Hero Academia. It's like, it's, I think it only has... Yeah, if you're trying to get basic, like Dragon Ball Z is a good one. Um, I, I, the I, One Piece. I, I don't know. I feel like one piece too many episodes. I, I don't want. I don't want to tell y'all the anime that I used to watch when I was a kid. Let him. Let him watch Fist of the North Star. That's like that's, Sailor Moon. That's like yes, a good well, starting Yu point. Haka show, Yu Yu Haka show is pretty basic. You know. It was Sailor Moon. Yeah, just I, just I get did, a, Honestly, I'm not gonna lie. After school, Sailor Moon came on. Uh, I watched it. It it got good, and then. I think they removed it, and I didn't get to find out the conclusion of the damn show. <laughs> so easy. So I've, I've been trying to give him a show with, like, less than 100 episodes just because I want him to, like, get finish one and then be like, okay, let me see what else is out there. Like, like I just started yeah. at 16. I have, I have time during the day to watch shows. So whichever yes. one is the best one, you definitely do. But, uh, but real quick, 16, what's your, one and one, what's your one movie and one show that you need to watch? Okay, so, yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah, so o Ozark for sure is like at the top of the list. And then um, with the next season with that, as far as movies go, um, I'm looking forward to, I mean, I know this is not really answering the question, but HBO Max is dropping all these movies that's supposed to be hitting the theaters. They all come into HBO Max. So that's worth oh, the subscription. No. That's, that's answering um, the question. Dune is my number one. Yeah, it's, it's, they got so many of them. So I'm interested to see the, the Mortal Kombat. You know, this is supposed to be the one that, you know, really brings it. So we're going to see. And if, if it's not any good, what difference does it make? You know, you didn't have to go take the trip to the theater. Exactly. You're at home. All good. It's a win, it's still a win-win in the way you look at it. Speaking of HBO Max, are you going to watch uh, The Little Things, the Denzel movie? Denzel? Yeah, it's it's it, it's uh, out there for to watch this weekend. Um, I 
I already can feel easy looking at me because it's like I'm gonna go Rotten Tomatoes. I'm always checking to see where it is on that, you know. Um, and it's you know I not looking that great. Yeah, yeah. I've heard some but, things where it's like it's all these great actors, but like the story, it's like why? Yeah, you got look. It ain't gonna cost exist? you anything but your subscription. So just. Not yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, 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 that's what I'm saying, man. This, yeah. this dude's doing research on stuff that's literally on his TV already. Right. <laughs> um, uh, oh, Death Notes. That's another one, Zeus. It's uh, only like 30 something episodes. Uh, it's a thinker, it's not a lot of like punching and kicking, but that's a quick anime. Look, you know what? You guys are here first. Zeno's gonna send me five anime shows that I need to knock out. I'll knock oh. them all out and I'll give you Already a review. Yes. All oh, right. All right. Before I forget, just, Naruto, just watch another, the wire. Another good just, one. Just watch the wire. <laughs> I got you. I, I got you. Sixteen. I so got you on the wire. I got you. Uh, I told him that I would give him. Uh, I, I would have said Naruto if it wasn't five hundred. If if Shippuden wasn't yeah, five hundred episodes. Yeah, dude. Yeah, you'll never finish Naruto. Yeah. Naruto. A friend of mine. Um. So he and his wife. So okay, he and I were talking, and I was like, "Oh, have you finished Naruto?" He's like, "No, I'm always, I'm, I'm almost at the end." And then his wife is, "What's Naruto?" And I was like, "Dude, you should watch it with her." And he's like, "Damn, why do you say that?" And it's because they had to then go back to the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. watching Naruto from the beginning. It's it's. That's how, that, That's the one that Julio Jones does the. the yeah, it does the Naruto oh. run. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. comprised of two like that, by the way. <laughs> It's comprised of two series, and it's over seven hundred episodes because it ran for fifteen years total. Is um, it on Netflix, Hulu, what? It's on Hulu. All of it's on Hulu. No, nah, I, I I can't do it. No, because they're gonna have commercials because I have the limited one. Right. So, so, so give, me, my give friend, me the DVD box set and I'll knock it out. My friend and his wife knocked out, I think, fi- um, five episodes a day for like six months. And Jeez. I feel like that's too many episodes. But anyway, they, they did like a good chunk and they finished it in six months. So it, it's possible. It's but possible. I'll, give you, I'll give you shorter animes. All right, appreciate that's, that's <laughs> dedication for sure. Yeah. Yes. Um, I think that pretty much wraps up the episode unless Zeus you have anything to add? Hey, not hey, listen, uh real quickly, tell the people, the good people where we can catch y'all. Y'all have a if y'all have a Twitter that we need to reach out reach out to you guys, uh the, the show and all that good stuff. And also there's gonna be a button somewhere down there for you guys to click. All right. right there. Take it before away. before before sixteen plugs the show, um I saw you guys talk about the GameStop thing. I didn't watch the whole thing. I don't know if, which way y'all went with the conversation. Um but I was very interested to know you guys' thoughts about that whole thing last week. Yeah. Um, so as I was telling Zeus on, on that clip, I started off the week um, very, very anti um, Wall Street bets, right? Like I was, because cause I felt like they were messing with well, people's livelihoods. Like, because yeah, everyone's talking about the hedge fund guys or whatever. But I was thinking, well, first of all, there are a lot of people who own the stocks that can't hold on to it. I mean, sorry, they, they can't sell it. As far as like people that are like middle management or people who get stock options within the company, and the fact that you know hedge funds also manage people's retirement funds, so that thing is going to go up and then it's going to crash, like crash hard afterwards. But then when Thursday came around and Robinhood did the whole thing of like, okay, now you can buy um, this stock, and the the stock started to drop, I thought that that was that was really shady from Robin Hood's perspective. I don't know, it's not shady. It's a completely foul. Like, yeah, yeah. Super duper foul. Up. Right. And especially knowing that a lot of the funding comes from Melvin Capital, who lost billions during the whole short squeeze. Um, the, the way I put it is that the Wall Street bets guys could be seen as market manipulation. What Robin Hood did is market manipulation. So that was my... That, that's a great point. And to... Wall Street bets, that is market man- manipulation. The only reason why it kind of gets a pass is because there's a lot of people on Twitter that kind of do the same thing. Like, yeah, yeah. I follow, like, a lot of stock guys on Twitter. And, you know, like, one guy, for example, he's got, like, 200,000 followers. And if he says, hey, I like this stock, 100,000 people are going to buy, you know, X amount of thousands and millions of shares of it. So you're kind of pumping yeah. it up. Easy. All right. You definitely got to watch the clip then because Zeno does touch on that, how Elon Musk would say, hey, I like this. And then all of a sudden his friends buy it out. Yeah. So, right. Yeah. But I'm going to say my honestly, my feeling about the GameStop thing is it kind of allowed us to see how we can actually do um, a capitalist protest using capitalism 
to be to let them know it's like yo y'all been running these things for this dirty for so long this is what we can do to you y'all need right. to fix what you're doing so any way that you can stick it to it man i like it you know um yeah yeah i, I was definitely here for it um yeah. elon musk can continue stock, to so pump up dogecoin be a little bit different if I some elon stuff. if you're watching if you ever catch this while you're wandering on youtube can you pump up dogecoin again i'd appreciate it get it to a dollar please <laughs> Get it to a dollar. <laughs> um, I I particularly like this story just because the nerd in me was happy when a, a friend of mine called me and she was like, "What's a what? What does it mean to short a stock?" I was like, "Oh, I'm glad you asked." And then I sat up and then started talking about shorting stocks. For like yeah, minutes. yeah. Um, I had a lot of friends asking me questions too, and I was like, I think this opened a lot of people's eyes. Like at my yeah. job, like people were like, "Hey, did you hear about what happened with GameStop?" And they don't even like mess with stocks besides, you know, like a simple 401k. So I think it brought a lot of new interest to the market as well. Yeah. I, I was surprised at how viral the story went. Like everybody was like, my mom was talking about it. I, that was shocking. I didn't. That, <laughs> it, was it went it's viral because, because a dying business yeah. was worth more than Walmart. Right. <laughs> like <laughs> that's why it went viral. I have, GameStop. <laughs> I have so assassins physical copies of games so and have, they were worth more than Walmart <laughs> at one point. I have Assassin's Creed Valhalla on the TV right now. I got the disc uh-huh. for it. It wasn't from GameStop. It was from Gamefly because no one is going to buy discs anymore. They're only going to get it if they're renting. If they're going to buy a game, they're going to get it from the PlayStation Store. Somehow yep. GameStop became a $15 billion company. So that was that was Good great for, for everyone to see. <laughs> Good for the, they, I, I really I really hope they the, Go ahead. So, you know, bought, you know, sold some of those shares so they can, you know, so too. Yeah. put some money in their cash flow and try to stay alive Definitely. or pivot to something else. <laughs> so 16, 16, uh, plug your show, man. Give it, give us a, give us a plug. Okay. So I got to go into shield mode because they make me do this when we're on the show this too. This is because... so weird for him because y'all are telling him what he tells our guests to do. This is great. No, this is, this is, this is all good. No, it's, it's all good. Happy to be here doing it. But, um, before you do that, so, MCG, I, I'm going to yeah. say one thing, man. I'm a, I love your passion for podcasting though. I really do. Like you can just see that you have a passion for podcasting. I guarantee you, you know, the most obscure podcasts, uh, <laughs> We probably can have a me and you could probably have a show on podcast because we probably could because because I like the obscure ones I like different ones you know what before we do that give us your favorite podcast right now like um, that's not ours Inception <laughs> podcasts and podcasts uh, it's like um that's out like like a national podcast or just some yeah national uh, national um it's the Dan Levitar show um it's not even close it's the reason why the show exists. Actually, our show exists because of that show because they basically make fun of sports radio is what they do, and they don't take yeah. it so seriously. And that's what we do when it comes to hip hop. We talk about hip hop in a way that's not like this with Junior Flecting at the altar and all that stuff. We just talking, we just talking, you know. We just having a conversation. We like music, we like things centered around it, and we talk about it. So yeah, Dan Levitar is up there. If you're somebody who is a, a sports fan, but you also like a big, you know pop culture and stuff like that in there, that'd probably be one to check out. Okay. Okay. Actually, you know what? I'm going to tell you one of my favorite ones is, um, have you heard of the Smartless podcast? Nah, but I'm always so, down to add one. It's Jason Bateman, Sean Hayes, and Will Arnett doing interviews oh, of people. You've already sold me with Jason Bateman. I'm still... Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. And, and, and I'll see them and Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend are two of my, my favorite interviewing people co- podcasts, so... But uh, you know what? You said national, so that means you know some not national. You know what? Go ahead and plug those dudes um, too. Which ones was your favorite among those? Well, I was gonna say. I mean, I'm on their show right now. I love you guys' Aww. show, man. You know? <laughs> he said it. He said the right answer. <laughs> there you go. Hey, Sixteen. Uh, do you think we should play a uh, 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 a radio show game with with the guys on ZZ? Yeah. Well, see, that's the thing, though. Which which game? I mean, we got we have so many. We, well, that's well, one of our know, catchphrases. We, we, obviously, we obviously, we got we got the one guy to go, but um, we also got start bench and cut. Um, so we could do that one as well, since you guys are more into sports. So we'll let you guys choose. You got a one guy to go or a start bench cut. Because we got so many games, that's a, a running thing. We always say we got the game that's sweeping the nation, but we got like ten games that sweep the nation. <laughs> I, I want <laughs> right. 
I want to start bench cut, and I want a hip hop version. Artists. Who are we oh. okay, well, th- these are like strictly sports, but we can. Oh, okay. We can. Well. Um, I can try to make a one on the spot. Or we could put one that, that could be a teaser for the next the next collaboration that we could put that together yeah, a hip hop yeah, version yeah, we could. of start bench um, cut for the for the next go round. Okay. Well, let me look real quick for uh, the sports one. While he's looking, Pull up my phone. J Cole, top five or now? Nope. In my top five, yes. And that's okay. not even a debate. But I did know you guys my... did you guys see our top five of uh, oh, 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 the rappers? Oh, rappers. rappers. Yeah. I want to. See. You did. You, you know, know I have a I have a soccer one, one but I know that they're not going to be into. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah he but, was. Uh, yeah. Because was my number one. And it was Zeno's number one. Because right. Zeno just made a meme. Like, the face, like, I want that screenshot because he was like, J. Cole, I was like, nope. And his face just became a meme. Like, Yeah, <laughs> hey, look. Zeno, don't start with him on it, bro. He, he's going to piss you off. So just just stay with me, man. Just, just stay with me. You love J. Cole and you're proud of it. <laughs> Thank you. All right, all right. I got, I got of culture two running right back groups. Um. Do y'all want to do one or two? I know y'all don't know which one's one and which one's two, but do y'all want to do one or two? Pick a number. Two. Two. All right, two. All right, so the three running backs we have are Saquon Barkley, Christian McCaffrey, and uh, Nick Chubb. So you got to start one, you got to bench one, and then you got to cut one. Oh, man, that's a good that's a good group, though. Can I go? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go for it. Start Christian McCaffrey. Um so what was the other two? It starts and bench. Hold on, let me. Saquon Barkley, Christian McCaffrey, and Nick Chubb. No, what are the options? Start bench and oh, start bench and cut. Start bench cut. Yeah. Um. Ooh, bench. Barkley cut Chubb. I know, and I'm a Georgia fan, but cutting Nick Chubb. I'm gonna go. I want to. I want to. I honestly want to cut CMC just because he's on the Panthers, but. He was on his way to get the MVP one of those years by himself, you know. Yeah, last so, year. Last year, well, right? It was, yeah. If he hadn't been on a on a bad team, he would have gotten it, I think, or he would have been damn cl- a lot closer than he was. Yeah, a thousand but, but, rushing and a thousand receiving, absolutely. But I'm gonna go with actually. I'm gonna start Saquon. I'm gonna bench CMC, and then I'm gonna cut Chubb. And I'm actually gonna say I was very close to starting Chubb. So this is a that was a good that was a good group. Yeah, that's a good trio. Uh, I'm starting CMC, I'm benching Chubb, and I'm cutting Barkley. Okay. I mean, either way, those, those three, it's like really hard to, to pick between them. But I think, for me, I think McCaffrey's got to be number one. It's like, yeah, if I, but... If I was doing fantasy, that's how I'd pick, so... Absolutely, absolutely, yeah, yeah for sure. Damn, 16? My answer was the same as what Zeno said, that um, he would start McCaffrey, and then he would bench Barkley, and then Chubb got, had to go. So, same thing. Cool yep. deal. Well, I just yep. figured we throw that in there real quick. Yep. Now no. we know McCaffrey. McCaffrey starts. No, you know what? Real quickly, do you have a you have a one gotta go? Let's do both. I let's do. do both I, I can I can pull up one. Right, let's <laughs> I do can pull one it up. Gotta go. he, one gotta go. All right. He, he um basically uh, made up enough of these. Yeah, he made up enough of these for I don't know probably the next ten weeks worth that we were going through. So you know, that's about only the, the only preparation we had going on. Like I said, we got so many stupid little games that we play all the time, but you know, it's what makes uh, whatever we do whatever it is we do. That's what keeps the viewers coming back and the listeners. Okay, so um this is a sports one, um and you gotta. The question says best duo, but we'll say which uh, duo has to go. So it's basketball. The first group is LeBron and Kawhi. The next group is Melo D. Wade. The next one is uh, KD and Giannis. And then the last one is Kobe and MJ. So Everybody at their best. The pri- in the, okay, yeah, in the prime. Okay. At their best, which duo has got to go? What was the second one again? Get- second one was Melo Wade. Giannis KD, MJ Kobe, LeBron and Kawhi. Well, easy, you got to do your catchphrase, man. Oh well, hey, well off the rip, LeBron and Kawhi are staying. It's not even a debate to talk about. They staying. 
Uh, Zeus, you want to go first or you want me to go? All right, so I agree with uh, yeah, LeBron is staying. MJ and Kobe are staying. So it's really between the other two. And you know what? I'd go with I'd go with KD and Giannis just because uh, KD couldn't win one on his own. He had to, he he was still a little bit he was still in his prime when he had to go to a super team to win one. So I'm gonna go KD and Giannis. They can go. Look, I like Dwayne Wade, but it's gotta be Melo and Wade. Um, Melo was supposed to be the the guy, and he just never was. You know, wherever he. I mean, wherever he was. Went. He just didn't get his team far. He yeah, can get you look, a scoring title. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's title. yeah. Individual titles don't mean much. So, um, no, Melo and Wade. Even though I love Dwayne Wade, I think I think outside of basketball, I think he's a really good guy. Uh, Melo and Wade. <laughs> we gotta go. Sixteen. Yeah. Um. It would be um. Katie and Giannis would have to go. Um. Like I thought about Wade and Melo, but I know Carmelo Anthony never won anything in the league but man for about a good 10 years as a weapon like as far as scoring he's pretty high up there man and wade was great and then and anybody before all these super teams got started yeah creating, you know yeah i think he's a little he's, he might be a little bit underrated like folks may look back at carmelo anthony's career and probably say he's a little underappreciated because he didn't he didn't do as much winning as he probably should have but any anything with lebron on it is staying period and of course, Kobe and MJ. But yeah, there, anybody, LeBron with anybody is staying. You could have told me that it was, you know, LeBron James and Popeye Jones. LeBron you know, is staying. Uh, LeBron, LeBron and Kyle Lowry, since you love him so much. Oh, God, Kyle Lowry. It, it could have been LeBron and, and, and me, and LeBron is staying. Well, who, and, who did you pair LeBron with? It was him and Kawhi, right? Oh, Kawhi. Oh, yeah, it was easily, him and Kawhi. Yeah. Easily staying. Yeah. Um, I mean, LeBron and Brian Scalabrini. It's, it's LeBron and whomever. Look, man, LeBron do, with anybody, he's man, gonna make him great. LeBron's go, gonna help him be great. Man, go look at the go look at the old seven Cavs roster. He did. He's literally done it with anybody. Okay, yeah. this dude yeah. took Mo Williams to the finals. Yeah, Scalabrini but is I a champ with, though. Uh, he, he does have a ring. Yeah, he got a ring. He does. <laughs> but uh, I'm with you, Zeno. I, I'm probably going Melo and D Wade. Yeah, I, can, I mean, I can't cut Giannis Antetokounmpo. Come on now. <laughs> Niger represents. So even yes, though he's Greek, he's Greek, but he's also Nigerian. Nice. That, that was one gotta go. Can't cut there his brother. <laughs> I really can't. Yeah, represent. Yeah, that's that's a lot of MVPs between those two to just cut them. Yeah. All right. Well, listen. This is a this is a fun show. If if any of you guys like these games. Check out the radio show. 16, I know you've been plugging the show for like the last, like what? Tw- I've been trying to get you to plug the show for like the last 15 minutes. Oh, yeah. He's like, sell your stuff, man. Um, Yeah, so, um, okay, so our show is basically, we're available on podcasts, and we just migrated to YouTube in the summertime. So there are some days or some weeks where we're not on YouTube. Like, it might be like nobody feels like being on camera. So... We drop the podcast. If we do audio only, it comes out on Tuesday, faithfully. If we're only doing audio, it's Tuesday. If we're recording, then I don't want to, like, give a day. It's been trending towards Thursdays, but I'll really just say that sometime during the week, you'll see a show from us between Wednesday and Friday on YouTube. And then it'll also release as a podcast the same day. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. So all your YouTube shows will always be on podcasts? Yes. All, all, the, not it, all your podcasts will be on YouTube show. Correct. So if we're going audio only, it's only on the podcast providers. It's not on YouTube. It's strictly audio. Which if you want to binge watch or listen to the radio show, everything will be on the podcast. Yep. It's got every every episode from way back in 2015 up to now. And generally, so, how long is your show? Like each um, we usually run, hmm, what do you say, easy about... Probably like close to two, two yeah, about two, about two hours, um, mostly, you know, without cuts. But yeah, between an hour and 45 minutes to, to two hours. And we usually mix up a little. When we're on audio, we usually mix in a little uh, hip-hop music in between. We take a music break, play uh, some underground hip-hop, and then we get back into our conversation. But um, if you want to catch us, um, just go to blogtalkradio.com slash it's the radio show. It's got every episode there or you can just search out the radio show or the radio show the aftermath on any other podcast providers apple 
Spotify, D's. I mean, anywhere, literally, that you can find a podcast, we are on it. Literally anywhere. There's nowhere where we're not. Pandora, you can find us. We're there. Yep. Uh, and, and ZZ Talk is coming soon. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Perpetual. Yes. Um, no, yeah, it's it's gonna it's gonna happen. Um, socials, man. Uh, Twitter, IG, um, any of those to to plug? Yeah. So um, we're on Twitter at the Radio Show ATL on Twitter. Instagram, we're at it's the Radio Show, and on Facebook, we are the Radio Show. But if you just do facebook.com slash it's the Radio Show, that'll get you to us. We also got. Um, and I can't remember off the top of my head because we never use it, but we have a website too, but we never really send anybody there because usually we're using like the social media for it, so we don't really use the website like that. Not gonna lie, I thought you were about to tell us you had a MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> wow. So so for the viewers, um I'm gonna upload two versions of this. I'm gonna upload the unedited, uncut. So there's not gonna be a you know lovely jingle at the beginning. It's just gonna be like this and drop it on YouTube. Um, so you're gonna see all this info that M16 has just given us in the description below, um, including their website, the Twitter handle, all that stuff. And then in the uh, edited version, I'm hoping you should see it over here to this side, all <laughs> the stuff that uh, M16 just told us. But um, anything else before we wrap up this? No, hey man, we really appreciate you guys coming. Hopefully this will be another, we'll have another one down the road. Uh, various events that are going to happen in the future. Maybe draft, maybe the beginning of next season. Beginning of next season will be too 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 late, so we'll figure something out. But get, keep a lookout for us. Um, you know what? Do you guys have guests on the radio show or only the Aftermath? Um, only, the, only the Aftermath. Okay. But, but, I mean, listen, there are always exceptions made. So if you guys want to come <laughs> yeah, on and shoot the breeze, that, that is, that's not one of those things where it's like, we just cannot do it. No. We need to find one of them times where y'all come on there and play the whole the whole games with us, with all the rest of us, and we just mix it up. We will make that happen, for all sure. Right. Right, I'm here for an NFL draft preview, though. That, I'm here for I, I don't know if the girl... I don't. I was going to say, that, that'll probably be best for a matchup with the four of us, because I don't know if the girls on the show will be cool with us talking about football for 45 minutes. Can't you just hear them now <laughs> chirping? Yeah. Like, we don't want to talk about that. <laughs> um... I, I, I was also going to you know, echo what you said. Thank you guys for coming on. Uh, I knew that we wanted to do another collab since the first one. Uh, I was hoping it was going to be something more um, more like flag football. <laughs> something yeah. like, like in person and then like film it and then I catch the winning touchdown. I had this whole thing playing out of my head. <laughs> uh, well, no, it, well, Zeno, if you're looking to still play, I got a team on Saturday that needs some people, so if you want to play. A, a team this Saturday? Yes. Flag football or regular football? I might. Uh, mm -hmm. Flag football. Okay. I might, hey, I, I might be down. I have bad knees, but I'll show up. No, no, but uh, <laughs> uh, it's really been great having you guys here. Thank you guys for coming on. And, um, yeah, the, the clip, the whole thing is going to be online tonight, and then um, the edited versions will be out there tomorrow. And yeah, I no, this, yeah, this was, I just want to take a second to just tell y'all that um, I love this, like, chemistry and partnership that we built, built up. Um, my brother will tell you, we've been looking forward to talking to you guys again. And then the banter that we had that people don't see on social media, in the comments, not, you know, do your messaging, you know, it's just, it's just been building. So, um, man, we're honored to be on you guys show. Um, it's been great being on here. And we just look forward to you know, continue to build it up and make these collaborations, you know, quarterly, however we want to do it, but definitely will not be the last time we hook up for sure. Yeah. That's for sure. Any last words, Easy? Uh, thanks again for having us on. Uh, I think I basically just echo everything 16 said. Been looking forward to this re-collaboration for a minute now, and I know it's the first of many, so appreciate you guys having us on. All right. Well, All right. guys, that's a wrap. Now you you want us back, just make the... I was going to say, whenever you want us back, just make the call. We're there. One call, that's all. Wait, that's a difference. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. I didn't realize you were a lawyer. <laughs>